letter of the Future of Life Institute as well. There's 28,000 people on there, or 30,000 now that signed it. And it's caused a very big debate for, uh, for three reasons. First, um, uh, the uh, invention of artificial intelligence and machine learning, and it's a, been a long process of 50 years, it's not new. But OpenAI came up with the first public model of doing this, which is quite different. The other companies have tried and decided not to pursue the public model before OpenAI for lots of reasons. And when Microsoft tried it, you know, seven years ago, there was a huge upheaval about all the evil things it was saying. Uh, and so, and so, OpenAI was the Sputnik moment, you know, the Sputnik satellite that the Russians launched. And then Americans said, "Oh my God, the uh, you know the Russians are going to own space and the cosmos, and you know, and, and we are here doing nothing." And and then they allegedly they went to the moon. Um, a lot of people think this is an interesting topic. But the Americans beat the Russians to the moon. Uh, th and that's kind of like what Microsoft and Google and, and so on are trying to do now. And so, so this was the outcome of a long conversation. And really what's happening is uh, that uh, Jeffrey Hinton, who, um, who was one of the founders of deep learning and machine learning, very smart guy, professor of course, uh, he left Google just last week uh, because he said what's really happening is here that we're going into an arms race of uh, whoever is first with general intelligence, AGI, right, is essentially going to own the world, parenthesis. Right? Um, and this is because uh, a, an intelligence that is generally intelligent, not just writing code or you know, giving answers, but kind of like a human, we are generally intelligent, you know, we can transfer skills. Um, and if we, if we define intelligence as the way of changing your environment based on what you want, Right, that will be a general intelligence that can do this. So he says, if, if we're going towards that, we're talking about potential 10 times the value of GDP that we can affect with this tool. We can be 10 times as prosperous. So that's his analysis of, of general intelligence. And that would increase our output, our economic situation, and of course our power. Um, and we're talking about roughly $13.5 quadrillion dollars. Uh, as potential value of, of AGI. And so this is the scariest part. First, there's a lot of money and power involved. There's military objectives involved in weapons, of course, weapon systems. Uh, so it's a power and money thing that has just com gone completely crazy. Uh, so like uh, OpenAI is now valued at what, a uh, hundred billion dollars? Uh, you know, their company, and they're going, they want to raise a hundred billion dollars in investment now, is what they just announced. So that's what's happening. The second thing that's happening is as we're moving towards a general intelligence, we're going to use these tools to be uh, essentially what I call IA, intelligent assistance. And that means we're going to use it everywhere where we can make people more efficient and faster and and overall create more margin. For example, a paralegal or a sales center, a call center, driving a car, you know, we could speed up the processes and that is gonna really have great impact on economics. So imagine if you're a lawyer, you know, you can just give a command to say, write a non-disclosure agreement, research the, the latest intelligence on these buildings that I'm selling, you know, or, or potential liability or, or whatever, right? This is all pretty, so that's happening. And the problem with that is that chat GPT and large language models and generative AI that generates you know, images and stuff uh, is trained on a set of data that is basically not uh, focused on the truth or on facts. It's not focused on balanced views. It's focused on getting an answer. <laughs> it's focused on patterns and, and data and coherence. But, you know, we know that real life is not about data. You know, real life includes data, but, you know, logic alone is just totally insufficient. Uh, and we also know that these models tend to make up stuff because if you push them hard enough, they'll just fabricate the missing pieces, you know. Um, it's like a Google Maps thing, it's the same thing, right? And, and that is not a problem that can't be fixed with more data. You know, it's a, it's a principal problem. So we have two issues here. Okay, first with the letter, uh, we have two issues. One issue is that uh, we are going to see this everywhere, like social media. 
and it will basically fabricate things and make things up and some of it will be very good and accurate but we don't know when <laughs> and, and there, there's absolutely no control on saying that this content is uh, generated by AI or not so you can have a news anchor on public television that is a, bo a robot voiced over with the chat GPT reading the news that they made up or that they thought was the most important but there's no human factor whatsoever so we could end up in a situation where we have the problems of social media which is distortion manipulation truth lying deep fakes times 1000 okay first problem second problem uh, and this is why uh, the letter is so important we could generate a system that would eventually be connected to five billion people on their mobile phones that's what we have today in high-speed internet basically would we'll have its fingers in all of the flow of information kind of like what happens with Facebook you know, where Facebook knows everything about you much more than you would ever hope to share with anyone and if you still use Facebook I hope not but anyway so so that system that system would become so smart and then there's supercomputing and the connectivity of everybody so that system could end up being so intelligent in terms of understanding humans that that it would become kind of super intelligent based on that alone and that could lead to what Stuart Russell one of the key uh, AI professors and writers at UC Berkeley he calls it misalignment right? it's, it's an alignment problem so the AI would be misaligned with our targets and imagine if you have a machine that has an IQ of a billion that is connected to five billion users on their mobiles and, and handsets and you know uh, wristwatches uh, it could be misaligned to interpret the world for us and it could therefore do things without our uh, explicit order like for example it could say let's, let's save energy today shut down all airplanes and airplane traffic control to save energy today and a hundred thousand planes would crash from the sky right? 